In previous videos, we've shown how you can simply go to the Google Chart API documentation and copy JavaScript from the uh, sample code in the Google documentation and paste it into the UX component. So you can see here we have a simple uh, UX component with a uh, div where we'd like to display a chart. And when we click this button, our chart uh, appears and the uh, code that is being called when we click this button over here is a JavaScript function called uh, do chart and this function is defined over here um, and this code here is just simply copied directly from the Google API documentation. Now obviously in a real world application this is not sufficient because um, unless you want to hand code uh, static uh, data uh, to display in the chart you're going to need to um, uh, presumably pull the data from a, a database. So let's show now how we can take this code over here and work backwards to the point where we're executing a uh, SQL query against uh, data from the Northwind uh, database to plot uh, the products uh, in a particular order in a pie chart. So let's start out by taking this JavaScript code over here and uh, moving the um, um, argument to the array to table uh, function over here outside. So I'm going to take this over here and uh, delete it and then replace it with a JavaScript variable called chart data. And then you can see here I've got, I'm going to just uncomment that code over there. So now what we've done is we've got a JavaScript variable called chart data and we've defined chart data over here. So that's basically. So all we've done at this point is to slightly restructure the code and let's go ahead now and check that it's still working. So go ahead there and we can see that it's still working. So the next thing that we want to do now is instead of basically hard coding chart data over here, we want to uh, reference some data that was computed from a uh, from a, a, a SQL query. So first let's go now uh, to the query builder and actually get uh, some sample SQL that gives us the data that we want. So let's bring up the uh, um, the query builder and let's set our query string here to um, uh, the Northwinds uh, database and now let's go and add our first table to the query. We'd like to get the order details table but uh, the order details table shows the product ID not the product name so let's go back to tables and then join that with the products table so we're going to join it on the product ID field um, and then uh, let's go ahead there and click finish and if we were to go now and do a preview we can see we get basically a lot of data so we only want a uh, data for a particular order so let's go and choose say order number um, 10248 would be fine so we'll go over to our filter here and then we'll go there and say order ID is equal to and then uh, 10248 and now when we execute our query we basically we see that we got th um, three records over here um, and uh, but uh, we now want to go and um, group this data by product ID in case there were uh, multiple records uh, for the same product ID so we'll go back to uh, properties now and we'll turn on group by go back to columns and then we'll say that uh, we want instead of all columns here we'll go choose from the products table we want product name which we want to be our group by and then from the orders table we want quantity which we want uh, the sum so now we've basically uh, got uh, our SQL query over here and let's go ahead here and execute the query and we can see that we have the data in the form that we want for our uh, for our chart we have a product name and then the corresponding uh, quantity uh, over there. So now let's basically just simply copy this um, SQL uh, to the clipboard so that we have it available for us uh, uh, in our server-side initialized event where we're going to actually go ahead and do the query and get the data. So let's pause now and pick this up in the next video. So we've, uh, we're continuing with our video now on how to do a SQL query to get the data in the right form for um, a particular type of uh, Google chart 
and we've defined a SQL query that gives us data in this form over here. So our next task now is to conf is to transform this data into the appropriate uh, uh, JSON syntax. So let's go back now to the UX component and we can see that what we want is we want data that looks like that looks like this. You can see that we have an array of arrays. So each item in the array basically has a um, a category name and then a value and then the first e entry is the column name so basically. So let's go now to our server side event over here and we can see that in the on dialog initialize event we've got uh, we've entered some code here so um, we've taken the uh, SQL that we used um, the SQL builder to generate for us over here in this particular case we've said where order ID equals 10 Five, five and here's our SQL select statement so next we're going to go ahead here and open up the connection to the Northwind database and then execute the uh, SQL statement and now that we've uh, executed the SQL statement and uh, uh, got the result set we can loop over the data in the result set to create the um, appropriate JSON format so recall from the um, JavaScript functions here that the format that we want for the JSON data is this. So let's just copy this back to the server side event so that we can uh, look at it um, over here um, and uh, just keep it in mind. So let's just go there and clean this up a little bit. I'll hit Control Zero and then uh, comment this out so we can just uh, see it. So you can see that what we've done over here is created a template. So here's our template. So each row over here basically looks like this. There's a square bracket over there and then there's the value work which is the um, the product field. So we've used um, JS escape so that we uh, make the data safe for JSON and then ds.data of product gives us the value in this column and then we have a comma over there there's the comma and then we basically have uh, ds dot data sum of quantity which is the second column over here so this is our basic template with a comma um, at the end over there so then we call the xbasic function called merge data into templates so what this does is it takes the result set here loops over all the records in the result set and merges it into the template then we basically take the result and add in uh, the first column over here which is the first row which are the titles so in this case the title is going to be product and quantity and um, uh, let's see what else have we done over here um, uh, let's actually go ahead now and uh, run this and see uh, what this looks like. So I'm going to go there and put in a, uh, a debug one and then so save this, go over to run it. So here we are. So we've ex at this point now we've executed our query and we have a result set and now we're going to basically merge the data into the template. So if we look now to see what uh, text looks like, what we have is um, basically a CRLF delimited list and we actually see that there's a trailing comma over there which we're going to need to get rid of because that's not valid uh, JSON and then what we're going to do is um, we're going to add in the title so uh, this is wrong we need to basically get rid of that trailing comma before we add in the uh, the title line and the opening and closing parens so let's pause now and pick this up in the next video so we're continuing our video now on how to use the SQL query to get the data for a Google chart and uh, we're in the debugger now and we can see that there's a trailing comma over there at the end of the uh, uh, last item that we need to remove so let's halt now and then go back to our uh, code there and we can see that what we want to do over here is after we've merged the data into the template we're going to go here and say R trim text comma so this is going to trim the trailing comma off the text then we're going to add this in and then we're going to basically construct a JavaScript command to put this data 
inside the dialog object in a variable called underbar data and then we can see here from the uh, uh, comments that explain how to send JavaScript back to the client in the on dialog initialize event what you do is you set the e.javascript variable so here we're going to go here and say e.javascript equals js so this means that once the uh, on dialog initialize event has uh, fired there's going to be a variable called underbar data inside the dialog object with all of the data that we want uh, for the chart so now when we run our component uh, let's just go ahead now and hit run basically sitting inside the javascript inside the dialog object is uh, the data but we're still not using it we can see we're still referencing the hard-coded data so let's go here and uh, turn off this debug one statement over here so I'll just comment that out go back to our JavaScript now and now instead of basically having chart data be uh, this hard-coded value we're going to say now that chart data equals dialog dot object under bar data so now um, we're going to basically be using the data that was generated on the server from the SQL query in our chart. So let's go now to uh, working preview and click this button. And now you can see that we're seeing the data from our SQL query over here. So there's basically all of the uh, products and what you can see what percent each product represents uh, of the order total. But we still have the wrong title over there. So we'll go back here and call this here um, um, order breakdown by product and then go ahead now and then uh, when we press our button we get the chart now of course if we want this chart to appear as soon as the UX component renders all we need to do is take this function do chart go over to the client side events and go to the uh, after Google visualization event um, fires and add in our call to the chart over there go ahead now and we can see that there's the chart that appears automatically when the UX component is uh, rendered and the data that is being shown in the chart is computed in the on dialog initialize event over here where we do our query against the uh, SQL database we use the merge data into template to uh, merge the data from our SQL query into a template that's the right form that uh, that the JSON uh, data needs to be in and then we put that JSON data into a variable in the dialog object and then our JavaScript function that actually uh, plots the chart references that variable so um, what we've shown in this video is how we can take a Google chart um, API and instead of using hard-coded data we can do a SQL query to uh, get the data from um, a back-end database and format the data in the way that the Google chart API expects. Thanks very much for watching.